We're here at Make Ears Making Podcast, episode three, with uh, the Pepper King himself of Pex Peppers. Um, thanks for joining us. How's it going? Pretty good. Um, so, let's see. Uh, I'm Garrett with Pex Peppers, and uh, I've been making hot sauce for 13 years, but I've also been a maker since 2018. Um, but it goes way, way longer than that. Um, I don't know. Ever since I was a kid, uh, seriously, about seven, eight years old, uh, my grandmother actually took me into Radio Shack ages ago. And uh, she's like, all right, pick out some stuff you want to play with, because apparently I was quite a nerd growing up. And uh, so that was the beginning of my, I don't know, nerd stage, I guess. Yeah, and I miss uh, Radio Shack, man. Yeah, so this is before uh, they got rid of all their little parts and stuff like that. Like, I'd go in, get some transistors. I'd go in and get my famous uh, favorite integrated circuit, the LM3909 LED flasher. <laughs> so you're playing with electronics pretty young, then. Oh, yeah. Um I remember I remember a story of me cutting my grandma's toaster cord because I wanted to see what electric electricity looked like. <laughs> How'd that pan out for you? Yeah. So uh I don't know. As far as 3D printing and stuff like that goes, uh I only learned about it in about 2018 and uh when a fellow hot sauce company gave me uh, a 3D printer to try to repair because they knew I was pretty good at electronics. And uh, it was an A-Net A8, you know, the house burners. Yeah. Yeah, I know I know a few people that have them and still run them. Wow, that's incredible. They probably had to get the, uh, oh, what were they, MOSFETs for fire protection or something. Yeah, I'm not sure what all he's running for electronics in it. I know that he did install Clipper on it, though, so... He's all, he, That's pretty. He's been tinkering with it quite a bit. Yeah. So uh, I've always been into computers and such. Before I did um, hot sauce, I was actually studying cybersecurity, but uh, I just didn't want to go down that route. And uh, so, I, because of that other hot sauce company, I was able to create weird things and promotional things like uh, hot sauce holders. So you get a handle on your hot sauce. Nice. Or so basically nowadays I only do uh, promotional stuff, and um, so here is a wall hanger for three hot sauces. Yeah, I saw you printing those on your YouTube channel the other day. Yeah. So um, I don't know. I just get inspired by all kinds of cool things. Uh, I'm like, well, why can't I hang hot sauce on the wall, you know? Yep. And then, uh, my Hornet logo. Nice. Someone, I uh, hired someone in Cape Town, South Africa to commission this for me, or I commissioned someone. And uh, this was made in 2020. But nice. um, throughout the years, I've had uh, Enders, I've had that A-Net, A8, but my favorite printer of all time is the Voron Trident. Yeah, I see you running. You, you have two of them, right? I have two currently, yes. Yeah. And then uh, sometimes I build them for friends, stuff like that, you know. Yep. Yeah, I got my Trident running in the background there. Oh, I see it. Awesome color scheme. Thank you. So how'd you get into making hot sauces, though? Well, basically, I got myself into a whole bunch of legal trouble because um, I was really addicted to pills and alcohol. And my probation officer one time said to me, Garrett, wh when are you going to do something with your life? Um, and then uh, I went to rehab after that. And it was actually in rehab where I decided hot sauce I was, because I was already good at cooking 
was already good at label design, stuff like that. So why not? So I decided to make my own product um, like that. That's awesome. Yeah, that's an important part of recovery is having something to put yourself into. Absolutely. Um, that was probably the most important part. Yeah. I had to find uh, something about idle hands. Yeah. I mean, people people with addictive personalities, we need something to put ourselves into. Otherwise, we get ourselves in trouble. So it's always substituting one addiction for another, but you just got to find a good Absolutely. one to substitute with. Now I'm addicted to the burn. That's awesome, man. Yeah. Uh, uh, hot sauce can give you a bit of a full body high when you're pushing your own limits there. Oh, yeah. So, uh, but I've even congratulations ended into, on uh, congratulations what's that? on congratulations on Thank being you. clean. Uh, it's not an easy journey. Thank you. That was 12 years ago. Awesome. So, 12 years clean. That's awesome. And uh, so, I don't know. I've just always been uh, into spicy things, and uh, it's kind of came naturally to me. Nice. So who who taught you to cook? You said you you were good at cooking. That that yeah, passion um, normally passed down from somewhere. Yeah, that's definitely uh, my mom and my grandma. And uh, aside from doing electronics as a kid, I used to binge watch. Um, as much as you could back in the 90s, uh, cooking shows. Yeah, I remember Food Network finally became a thing. That was. Yeah. Uh, some of my inspirations would be, uh, oh boy, Julia Child, the old school ones, Jacques Pipin. Uh, there's a few more. And, uh, but yeah, I was just immer I was always immersed in food. And then, um, my love for spicy food actually came from my mom because uh, she was on her honeymoon in Jamaica and she brought me home a scotch bonnet sauce. And I thought that was just awesome. <laughs> eight year old a, me. That's a hot sauce for eight year old. <laughs> oh, yeah. I've only had a, a few sauces made with scotch bonnet peppers. Wow. But uh, they're. They're a pretty intense pepper. Oh, yeah. So um, now what I'm doing is uh, I'm a maker in a different sense of the word as well. So I am starting to breed my own peppers. Awesome. And uh, I'm also starting to... Uh... Here, I have one right here. It's called the funk. Now, the actual pepper, some. there you go. Well, the funk has a pepper in it that is a land race from Brazil. And it's called the CGN 21500. It stands for Center of Genetics Resources, Netherlands, CGN. And then the 21500 is the, just the seed database number. Nice. So, um, I'm starting to take land race varieties and cross them with each other. So I'm starting from scratch, just like I always do. Yeah. So how, how does that, how does that work? Cause that's a little, that, that's getting into, you know, herbology and stuff like that. Um, it's a little complex, but basically if you want to create your own pepper crosses, you plant one type in the center. This is the easiest way I've learned. You can plant one type in the center and then four or five surrounding it uh, of okay, the type so that you want to cross it with. Which one's going to give you, is there like a male, female thing? Are you cross pollinating or are you just kind of letting nature take its course? Uh, I'm letting nature take its course. Um, now you can hand pollinate, but I'm a little uh, shaky for that. Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Um, now that that funk one, when you made that, you had three sauces that you did with that. Um, because yeah. you sent me them, and I have one bottle of the funk with the label on it, and the other two um, have 
the, the prototypes the prototype labels on it um the funk one i had to reorder because it ended up broken in the mail but um so oh. i picked that up after it actually came out but man i love those sauces thank you um i would say my number one seller at the moment would be um my pueblo chili salsa verde and i have I, don't I have, have a fun one. story about this. Packing in plastic, uh, 3D printing has actually helped me grasp the requirements of packing in plastic because I'm working with so much plastic. But these are PET bottles, and you can run them through one of those, uh, what is it, polyformers? Okay. Yeah, so when you're done with your bottle, you can just recycle it with a polyformer. Yeah, that's very sweet. Yeah, I was surprised because everything I ever got from you came in glass bottles until I got the Poblano Reserve sauce um, back before Christmas. Yeah. And I ordered two of those um, because my daughters loved the uh, the Gold Rush one. And, yeah, yeah. Uh, you had discontinued it, and you said this one was very similar to it. So I ordered them each a bottle, and it got here, and it was giant bottles, and I I didn't realize that. And so that's what the, they got in their stockings this year was uh, some Pex Peppers hot sauce. <laughs> oh yeah, bringing the heat during Christmas time. Yeah, it uh, it, it's quite entertaining because they both tell me they don't like spicy things, and then dip everything in hot sauce. So uh, yeah, I don't know. But uh, so there's got to be uh, quite the creative experimentation with uh, coming up with the recipes for your hot sauces. You know, coming up with recipes oh, man. from scratch is is not always so not always easy. A lot of my recipes, you wouldn't believe it, are inspired from everyday foods. Uh, so they just released a uh, a lot of the Mountain Dew flavors uh, okay. actually inspire my fruity sauces. Um, you ever smell a cleaner? <laughs> no. You ever smell a cleaner that's that smells delicious and you wish, oh, man, I wish I could drink that. <laughs> well, I'm trying to how to say it make that edible if that makes sense trying to actually make that flavor that you smell okay and uh i don't have any on me at the moment but one of my sauces is actually modeled after uh wild berry pop tarts uh it's uh it's the wild berry whoop ass yeah 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 i haven't tried that one yet i've got um, eight or so of your sauces but that's yeah. one that i haven't tried so when then, you're uh, when you're doing yeah. that do you like do like small test batches or and then scale that up or you just go, i said when you're when you're developing a sauce like that do you do like okay. small batches and then scale it up after the fact exactly um because otherwise, I'd be spending five hundred dollars on a prototype batch. Can't be doing that. Yeah, I didn't know um, how large batches ended up being. Yeah, so I normally uh, now I'm still extremely small batch compared to most of the producers you find. Even though I do have their equipment, I just want to keep it smaller and controlled. My usual batch size is around uh, twelve gallons. That's still that's still a lot of sauce. Still oh yeah, sauce. so that's about three hundred bottles a batch. Nice. Now, so we're kind of at that equilibrium where uh, these batches are getting a little large for our kettles that we get with that we have, but they're still too small for my eighty gallon kettle. So eighty kind of in. Halfway land there. 80 gallons is a lot of sauce. 
Yeah, that is about, oh, let's see, 2,000 bottles. Yeah. Hey, you know, the, you know what, though? It says, uh, it says a lot about um, the success of your company, and because of how good your sauces are, that success, that you're able to 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 make in batches that large you know i know a lot of uh grassroots you know people that sell at uh like we have a festival in town called popcorn festival yeah. and you know bratwurst festival up the road and stuff like that and uh, a lot of companies sell stuff there but they're not able to make in that kind of quantity you know it says a lot about like you're doing pretty well with it that you're able to make I've been making uh I've been making hot sauce for since 2010 that's when I actually made my first sauce uh and then it was kind of stagnant for about two three years until I went to the rehab and that whole story and then what made it really blow up is you're never going to believe this is bitcoin now I heard you tell this story a, a bit before on uh, one of your streams, but uh, go, ahead and, go ahead and tell the story again. All right, so back in 2013, 14, I used to accept Bitcoin for my hot sauce because nobody else did. And that's given me the ability to send uh, hot sauce to people worldwide because they all wanted something to spend their Bitcoin on but they didn't want to buy a VPN or anything shady from one of the darknet sites. So I provided a legal and easy way to spend your money on stuff that will burn your mouth. Yeah, I, I had some Bitcoin back in, in those days. Somebody bought some RC car parts from me and they had Bitcoin. It was going over to uh, South Africa actually as well. And yeah. uh, it paid me in Bitcoin or maybe it was australia it might have been australia that it was going to but paid me in bitcoin and you know it was like 120 dollars worth of bitcoin back then it you know yeah 30 some cents a thing i got like 360 bitcoin locked up in a in a wallet that i can't access yep that's how it goes i'm a millionaire if i can get into that do you still have any of the bitcoin from that time or you dump it in I actually had to dump it all to fund the company. Well, at least uh, that's something. It's all right. But, um, and I found out something really funny is 3D printing is doing the exact same thing. Uh, there are people all over the world, not who want to spend their 3D printers on stuff, but you know what I mean? It's just a, an online community that's worldwide because Everyone likes to make things, and it's awesome. Yeah. And I, feel, I feel honored, honestly, to uh, be a part of it. Yeah, it's a, it's an awesome community. I mean, there's there's always going to be a few personalities here and there, but by and large, it's a fantastic community. Oh, yeah. And, uh, so I've been 3D printing and designing for, I don't know, about... What year is it? Six years now. Nice. So, what's what's your a favorite sauce you've ever made, and b favorite uh, thing you've ever designed and three D printed? All right. So, my favorite sauce I've ever made that you can't ask me that. It's like choosing between my children, but <laughs> I absolutely do have a favorite. It is. Pogo Red. Now, this started its life as my enchilada sauce when uh, I first moved here. Um, I had to get a flavor for the red Pueblo chili that they offered in the area, and uh, I made this. And then um, once I nailed the sauce, I added a little vinegar and then uh, to preserve it. And then, yeah, Pueblo Red. This is my number one bestseller, and in number two place would be... Uh, one called Pueblo Reserve, and that's Pueblo Reserve was inspired off of A1 steak sauce, even though that sounds crazy. Nice. 
Yeah, I, I've I've been enjoying the that Pueblo Reserve sauce. Now, at one oh, time, yeah. you told me you relocated based on the pepper availability in the area that you're in now. Yeah. So, so how'd that go? I am working on changing what is available here. So, um, I'm noticing uh, that when I buy 300 pounds in a shot, I'll also find some over at the grocery store, something like that. I'm like, really? Am I really influencing what's being brought into the area? So I'm honestly starting to purchase whole farms worth of peppers. Interesting. That, that's, that's interesting that uh, the availability locally would swing based on what, what peppers oh, yeah. you're using. Wow. So an example of one that's really hard to get here in Colorado is uh, a red habanero because they're all East Coast distributed instead of uh, West Coast because here it's all orange habanero. Okay. Yeah, I've never paid much attention, but most of the habaneros I see out here are red. Um, I sometimes get some mixed ones that yeah. are uh, orange yellow i think and red yep um the red ones come from the caribbean and then the orange ones usually come from mexico nice that i use those in my uh my chili oh i also uh before i forget i wanted to give your viewers a 15 percent off coupon code of basement or no sorry garage you can cut that part out Okay, awesome. I'll put that in the description. Is that is is there a time limit on that? Um, time it is good for a month. Well, I appreciate just, that. Uh, it's a just message me that and make me don't forget. I I will. I'll 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 remind you. Uh, uh, so if you haven't tried his hot sauces, pick yourself up a few. They're they're fantastic. Um. If you have tried his hot sauces, I'm sure you're ordering some more right now anyway. Uh, so, did you, now you're in Colorado, right? Yeah. Did you I actually make started out, out in Pennsylvania. Weekend? You started out where? I actually started out of Pennsylvania. Oh, nice. I got family from there. Where at in Pennsylvania? Um, Harrisburg, actually. Okay. Yeah. Uh, my grandparents lived in York for a while, right outside. Okay. Of, yeah. And then, uh, but they were from uh, Huntington, Pennsylvania, right out by Altoona. Okay. Yeah. I know right where both those places are. But I make, I, I drive through Harrisburg a couple times a year. Oh, well, there yeah. you go. I got to drive back and forth to Jersey to pick up my son from here in Ohio. So. Yeah, that'll take a while too. But did you make it up to uh, Loveland last weekend? Uh, as we record this, last weekend for the Rocky Mountain Rep Rap Fest. Yeah. So uh, we were up there, and we uh, got to meet quite a few people as well. Uh, we met the whole Voron team. We met West 3D. We met Luke's Laboratory, uh, the Armchair Engineering. A lot of cool people. Yeah, it looks like an awesome, awesome show. It's a little, it's a little bit of a trip for me, but uh, that is what it is. This is the uh, Fairy Floss by Cookie Cad. Oh, I was wondering what filament it was. It's very pretty. Is it going from like a a blue down to a purple? Yeah, um, it's a gradient. Filament, so it it only has blue and purple. It's not blue, purple, red, green, yellow. You know. Yeah, um, that's what I like about their stuff, though, because it's not like just a rainbow. Like it's just two colors. I've got a uh, a mermaid and a unicorn, I think, from them. Okay. I hear they're, cool. they're and, coming uh, out with the ABS stuff, though, so I'm excited about that. Yeah, I want to really try their ABS as well. 
And then um, there's a few more things with 3D print. Uh, I actually have a tool that applies the heat strengths, these things, to the bottle. Well, we, we put them on and then it spins the bottle for us. And then there's a heat gun here that we're keeping uh, the heat even all, all along the bottle as it spins. So you don't get all kind get all kinds of ugly gaps in your heat shrinks or tears or something like that, you know. That's pretty cool. I saw uh, back at Christmas time you were doing uh, caps, three D printed caps for them, like to go over top yeah. of them. And then we have three D printed uh, hot sauce displays, all kinds of cool things, just like that. Yeah, see, I need enough hot sauces to fill that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, um, I will hook you up with the file, and uh, you can put that in the link in, in the description as well. Awesome. I will absolutely do that. And then, uh, but as far as other pro oh, I have one more cool thing. Um, it's a 3D printed greenhouse. Um, so I have these raised beds, right? And uh, I really, being in Colorado, it hails a lot. So I needed a way to protect my plants from hail. And uh, I just 3D printed all the uh, cross T joints for PVC pipes. And uh, now it's protecting my plants. Nice. So how, how big of like a greenhouse do you, are, do you have, are you working with there? You said you were cross um, doing your own cross. I wouldn't actually stuff. call it a greenhouse. Um, I just, I don't grow my own peppers. So what I do is I grow out the seeds that I need to multiply for my farmers. Okay. And then uh, they grow the peppers for me. Oh, that's nice. So a little co-op situation with farmers or? Yeah, so I am, uh, let's see. I am planned about two weeks out, and uh, or not two weeks, sorry, two years out, and um, so let's see. I send them the pepper seeds that I want them to grow, and then yeah, basically just like a co-op. It's awesome. It's a, it's always nice when you know businesses find a way to support the the rest of their local community, and supporting farmers is fantastic. I, yeah, you know, I grew up in family of farmers, so. Yeah, so uh, I'm always experimenting. That's just what I do. And uh, you'll see that on my um, hot sauce labels as well. Uh, if you pay attention, you'll see that a lot of my hot sauce labels just straight up change um, because I'm at the end of a roll and I just want to change its look. That's cool. Do you print your own labels then, or are you um, no, no. having um, it printed? I get mine from a place called Columbine Label here in Centennial, Colorado. So if anyone needs labels, I really suggest them. Yeah, well, they're they're nice labels, and I've I've not had any come off or anything like that. Thank you. So, um, do you have anything? Uh, how should you want to share with us or other passion projects or anything like that? Um, basically, cooking, gardening, and 3D printing are my uh, passions, and I managed to combine them all into one. That's, that's always a challenge and nice when they all line up and come together. Oh, yeah. So... I just want to say, if you're going to try any hot sauce of mine, I want you to try Pueblo Reserve. Because you it can't stop tasting sauce. it. Yeah. That's awesome. Is that All a right. storefront? Can people I'm come sorry? shop with? Is that a storefront? Can people come shop with you? Or Yes, it is. So you can come to 2705 Lake Avenue, Pueblo, Colorado, 81004 and stop by our shop um we got this in 2021 and uh it was actually an old bar 
that we retrofitted with this awesome sauce kitchen. Nice. Well, congratulations on on your success and making making a business out of your passion and what you yeah. love to do. It's it's something that uh, most people, I think, uh, really strive to do in their life, wish they could do in their life, and making that happen is. That's well, I will say it took an awful lot of work and uh, luck. I'm not going to lie to you. It's straight up luck. Yeah, a lot of life is. It's unfortunate, but. Yeah. So, um, you can use the code garage for 15% off, and that is good for a month from date of airing today. Excellent. Well, I appreciate the, the discount for the viewers, and I appreciate you coming on and sharing a little bit of your passion and what you do and um, links for Anytime. the website, uh, your YouTube page, uh, because uh, I, I always find you in the middle of the night while I'm at work on there doing stuff, which is entertaining for me. Gives me something to watch during my breaks. Uh, and uh, I, like I said, I really appreciate you coming on and sharing it with us. And uh, links for any of uh, the other things, uh, the hot sauce display. And like I said, the website, YouTube page, and discount code all be in the description. I thank you very much. Anytime.